So, good afternoon, everybody. You're very, very welcome to this solution talk, Circular Economy and Innovation in Waste Management. I am Adriana. I am a materials engineer. I work as a Circular Economy consultant. And, uh, wow. <laughs> Yes, um, I will enjoy this session, I am sure. I, I just hope that you do too. We have 45 minutes. We have five great speakers. Uh, each of them will have five minutes time to present their ideas, projects, visions. And then at the end, uh, there is a question and answer slot. I would highly recommend you to satisfy your curiosity. Just raise your hand and ask, don't be shy. Just make the most of it. So, I begin very, very briefly with a, with a very simple definition about what is actually the circular economy. The circular economy is based on a model which is regenerative by design. And what that's it means? Um, it means designing for durability reuse, remanufacture, recycling, for what? Actually, to keep these materials, components, resources, energy, water in a loop, to keep them circulating in the economy. And that is not easy. That is really a hard task because it involves everything and everyone, okay? So you really need collaboration among governments and businesses and academia and individuals and it's also the city is also involved and our products are also involved and our yops so the circular economy requires a systematic change and our two first speakers know a lot about systemic yeah, chains and systemic solutions. Um, we will travel to the north. We will travel to Oslo. Um, and uh, so let's travel to Oslo and welcome Cynthia Reynolds, circular economy strategist and founder of a very special project that she's actually launching and presenting today for the very, very first time. So, Cynthia, the floor is yours. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Is that working? Oh, I don't think it's... That's not my presentation. Sorry. So while we're waiting on my presentation to come up, what are the words that come to mind when you think of the circular economy? That's me. <laughs> so, the circular economy. Depending on who you ask, you're going to have a different answer. It's like asking a room full of blindfolded people to conceptualize an elephant. You're going to... You can't hear me? Sorry, is that better? Okay. It's like asking a room full of blindfolded people to conceptualize an elephant. You're going to see industry holding on to the legs, saying these are the pillars. You're going to see policymakers holding on to the trunk, saying I've got something unwieldy, what am I going to do with this? You're going to see NGOs holding on to the tail, saying what piece am I a part of this? And the individuals, all of us sitting there, feeling this huge behemoth. We say, this is too big for me to understand what part I am. And so all of these different aspects, they're like facets of a diamond. And we have to look at saying, how can we bring all of these together? Because they are all valid parts of the circular economy. 
And so when we went about looking at what is the circular economy, we wanted to find out from the researchers, not just from asking one aspect or one stakeholder. And a, a research was done on 114 different definitions of the circular economy. And they defined it quite simply as an economic system that removes the concept of end of life by using alternative business models to look at the production, distribution, and consumption phases of all of our resources, reducing waste through a variety of solutions, reduce, reuse, recycle, and recover the elements. And this is being done at all levels of society, from the macro end with cities, regions, and nations, through the meso level with clusters, networks, and eco-industrial parks. But this also includes the micro level with consumers, the products they use, and the companies they support. And all of this is done for sustainable development. And what that implies is environmental quality, economic prosperity, but also social equity. And this is a piece of the puzzle that is not often talked about. But not all of these loops are the same. Not all of them bring together the same impact. The United Nations International Resource Panel described what they defined as the value retention processes. I think I'm getting feedback. And what they were saying is that reuse, repair, refabrication, and remanufacturing, these processes, while they're compatible with recycling, what they do is they retain the inherent value of a product, whereas recycling retains the value of the material that's being recycled. So we need to focus on where is the impact strongest. And so we've developed Circular Oslo. It went live today, and we're quite proud of it. And what it is is it provides tools for our entire society in the broader region. And this is a multi-stakeholder regional initiative. How can we provide policy solutions and tools for policymakers to understand what the big picture is and how to focus it there? We have a knowledge hub, we have e-learning, and we have tools for businesses and entrepreneurs to say, how can I make my company more circular? Or for individuals who are working as consultants, for example, to say, how can I start developing jobs in the circular economy, enabling this process to be accelerated? And so the really interesting part is the backbone beneath Circular Oslo. What it is, is it actually has the digital infrastructure to be able to support a variety of solutions and identify any single circular economy initiative at any level and map it based on what is its scope? Is it local? Is it looking at a regional solution, national or international? What is the location? And is that location urban or rural? Very different needs are required there. What are the material inputs and outputs? Which of the sustainable development goals does this project support? What is the technology? Is this augmented reality, AI, distributed ledger tech, blockchain? Who are the stakeholders? Is this public, private? Is this research and academia? Or does it go right down to citizens and NGOs? And what's the business model? And we map many more points than that. We are looking at what is the sector, what is the technology, what is the circular context, what are the barriers, how can we support this, is there a policy, is there funding, and this system can be placed into any region, connecting the stakeholders high and low, as well as bringing together the urban and the rural communities. I've got one minute left. And through doing so, map any single initiative. And from there, the system dynamically produces open data that is then searchable. So if you're looking to find out what's happening with energy that can be scaled, maybe it shouldn't be scaled, it should be replicated. We have this information. And so take a look. We're doing our first mapping session with the city of Oslo next week. And we're going to be identifying and then highlighting these solutions internationally. And so regions, they're distributed by design, each with a culture defined by history, resources defined by nature, and a future defined by the people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cynthia. Thank you very much. That's for you, Inakri. So, as a regular visitor in this kind of fairs and conferences, I, I always find very interesting to get to know a little bit more about these local initiatives, local pioneering initiatives like the one that follows. Uh, Ignasi Jimenez uh, will present us the Valles Circular. 
a circular economy program made in Catalonia. Ignasi, the floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize because I will not do in English, so I will no speak in Spanish. Uh, muchas gracias también por la invitación y poder participar pues, en este Smart City. Para nosotros es muy importante porque lo que os vamos a presentar es una estrategia territorial, ¿de acuerdo? Una estrategia territorial, os explicaré cómo se inició, cómo se ha desarrollado y en qué punto nos encontramos en este momento. Mirad, un poco de información de contexto. Valles Occidental es una comarca, tiene más de 900.000 personas, somos más de 27.000 empresas, hay 131 polígonos industriales en nuestro territorio y en este, en este sentido podemos decir que es uno de los polos industriales más importantes de Cataluña, de España y también del sur de Europa. Y por lo tanto, nosotros teníamos claro que teníamos que tener una estrategia de alianza no solo entre las instituciones, no solo con los centros de conocimiento, sino también con los ciudadanos y las empresas. Y, y esta estrategia territorial, evidentemente, parte de un liderazgo, de una iniciativa, de una colaboración que parte de las distintas administraciones, de los distintos niveles de administración, pero evidentemente incorpora pues, la visión del, del, del desarrollo industrial, eh, la visión de los ciudadanos y, evidentemente, una visión que cada vez está más en nuestra agenda política y ciudadana, que es una visión medioambiental. De hecho, antes lo ha dicho Cintia, cuando hablamos de uh, economía circular, no nos solo nos estamos refiriendo a cómo tiene que ser la producción industrial del futuro. Yo creo que también estamos hablando de cosas tan importantes como de equidad social. Yo creo que Cintia ha hecho un, un importante esfuerzo en intentar desarrollar una cosa que estamos viendo en este, en este congreso y lo estamos viendo en muchas personas que llevan un pin que es aquí circular. ¿no? Hay alguno por aquí que lo he visto que lo lleva también. Estos son los ODS y es la Agenda 2030 que desde Naciones Unidas se ha fijado. Y seguramente si hablamos de economía circular estamos hablando de muchos de, estes, de estos 17 ODS que forma parte de la Agenda Mundial de Cambio que los Estados nos están proponiendo y que tenemos que desarrollar desde lo macro, en este sentido, pues de las organizaciones potentes, pero que tiene que llegar también a una agenda local, a una agenda que incorpore este punto de vista ciudadano y también de las empresas. Mirad, esta es una iniciativa territorial, ya os lo he dicho, forma parte de esta cultura de partenariado público-privado y evidentemente está orientado hacia las acciones. De hecho, yo creo que antes de que se empezara a hablar de economía circular, ya hacíamos muchas cosas de economía circular, a veces sin saberlo. Y lo que se trata es de poder hacer visible y poder convertir en replicables buena parte de estas prácticas que se, se están llevando a cabo antes y todo de que empezáramos a hablar de economía circular. Mirad, nosotros empezáramos a trabajar el 2016, Uh, con una red en la cual formaban parte empresas, pero también administraciones. Esto lo formalizamos en el 2017 en un gran acuerdo a la cual de, uh, y participaron las principales administraciones, pero también uh, agentes sociales y también económicos del territorio. Lo que hicimos es centrarlo de inicio en temas especialmente de promoción económica, pero después lo que hemos hecho es hacer desde la administración una cartera de servicios para poderla ofrecer evidentemente a las empresas, pero también al conjunto de las administraciones para que, porque participen, yo creo que es el futuro, y de esto tenemos que empezar a hablar, de las ciudades circulares. Hablamos de Smart Cities, pero seguramente también empezaremos a hablar de Circular Cities. Yo creo que es muy importante porque, si os fijáis, y si me permitéis la licencia, es muy importante ser inteligente, pero si uno no es capaz de concentrar su inteligencia hacia objetivos como puede ser, evidentemente, uh, ser más sostenibles desde un punto de vista medioambiental, social y también económico, no tiene muy sentido. Nos estamos centrando en el instrumento en sí y no el objetivo que tenemos que perseguir. Mirad, yo para ir deprisa, aquí tenemos una parte importante de la representación de los distintos partners que tenemos en esta estrategia territorial. Yo creo que es muy importante recalcar y resaltar que esto forman parte muchos partners. Evidentemente, aquí cada cual tiene su rol. Yo creo que es muy importante porque se va, yo supongo que los ponentes que vienen después van a hablar mucho del waste, pero también es muy importante hablar de los ciudadanos y ser capaces también de hacer estos 
este trabajo de concienciación entre la ciudadanía, porque, como decía antes, no solo se trata de producir, sino también de consumir en circular. Yo creo que esta es una cosa realmente importante, que las administraciones aquí tenemos un rol muy importante a, a decir y a hacer muchas cosas. Mirad, en estos momentos nosotros tenemos distintos proyectos en marcha, tenemos proyectos de prevención de incendios forestales como el Boscus del Vallés, tenemos proyectos en contra del malbaratamiento, del desaprovechamiento alimentario, tenemos también proyectos de, de guías educativas, especialmente de guías al público más joven y también a la actividad productiva e industrial. Uh, evidentemente cada uno de los distintos municipios también tiene sus estrategias más locales, pero que somos capaces de poder incorporar una estrategia pues, más, más global y deciros, ya para terminar, que lo realmente importante que estamos trabajando en este sentido es ser capaces de definir, y lo tendremos que hacer entre todos, cuál es el futuro de estas ciudades circulares, en la cual eh, lo, lo SMART tendrá mucha importancia, pero que no tenemos que perder de objetivo, que lo importante no deja de ser la circularidad y la sostenibilidad. Muchas gracias. Gracias, Ignacio. Muchas gracias. Yes, like Ignacy said, uh, well, this session is called Circular Economy and Innovation in Waste Management. So we will focus now a little bit on waste management. Waste is not an accident, I would say. Waste is actually a consequence of decisions made at the design phase. So if we design for recycling, if we design for remanufacture, if we design for reuse, um, we would make our life a little bit easier but um, it's not easy and and the reality is that uh, the cities have to deal with tones and tones of waste every single day and we talked about the e ecosystem the circular economy ecosystem and the different stakeholders that are involved in this ecosystem and well there is a group of stakeholders Um, yeah, which I think that play a key role in turning waste into resources. And this group is the waste management companies. So welcome, Olivier Mallet, um, heads of the waste treatment department of IFCC. The floor is yours. Muchas gracias. ¿Se, se me oye? Sí. Voy a hablar un poco más alto, quizás. <laughs> Buenas tardes, soy Olivier Malet, trabajo en la empresa FSS, una empresa experta en la gestión de residuos sólidos urbanos. Nuestros clientes son las administraciones. Yo llevo personalmente 23 años trabajando en FSS y esta tarde os voy a contar un poco varios proyectos concretos que estamos desarrollando con el objetivo de mejorar la sostenibilidad de nuestra sociedad. Pero, eh, trabajo en el servicio de tratamiento, reciclaje de residuos. Llevamos tres años metidos en proyectos europeos para desarrollar nuevas tecnologías y mejorar tanto el reciclaje como la valorización de los residuos. Empezaré... Eh, entonces, perdone. Eh, ahí en la pantalla tenéis una lista exhaustiva de los proyectos donde estamos metidos, pero esta tarde, a tener poco tiempo, unos cuatro minutos, entraré más en detalle en cuatro de ellos, cinco de ellos, dos proyectos referentes al plástico, dos proyectos referentes al biogás y otro proyecto referente al uso de los insectos para la valorización de la materia orgánica. Como vos decía, eh, estamos metidos en el mundo del plástico y para intentar incrementar la, la, el reciclaje de los plásticos en otras plantas, hemos desarrollado eh, dos proyectos. Uno referente a todo el plástico film. Sabéis que eh, un alto porcentaje, por desgracia, de nuestra basura está compuesta de film, que eh, por desgracia tiene poca... poca poco rendimiento en cuanto a, a, a su reciclaje. Eh, hace un par de años eh, presentamos este proyecto a Europa, lo aprobó 
y estamos ahora mismo en pleno desarrollo de este proyecto en la ciudad de Granada con varios socios. La Universidad de Granada tenemos eh, tecnólogos como Stadler, como Rollbatch y eh, me estoy perdiendo un poco la, en la PowerPoint, lo siento. La, el objetivo, repito, de este proyecto de plástico es tratar todo el flujo de las bolsas. El segundo proyecto de plástico es dedicado al resto de los plásticos que al día de hoy no se recuperan en nuestras plantas. Todo el montaje ahora mismo de nuestras plantas de tratamiento de residuos se dedica a reciclar el plástico PET, el plástico PAD y luego el brick, los metales y el papel cartón. Pero existe toda una familia de plástico resto compuesto por polipropileno, PAD, polietileno de alta velocidad y PVC que ahora mismo pasan a rechazo, es decir, a los vertederos y o a la incineración. El segundo proyecto que estamos desarrollando eh, tiene como objetivo de dar una solución técnica a esos plásticos. ¿En qué consisten esos procesos? En ambos casos, tanto el film para, como para el mix, la, la primera etapa del proceso de esos proyectos es una clasificación de los plásticos en familias. Una vez clasificados, pasa por una línea de lavado, principalmente usando aguas frías y aguas calientes, y una trituración. Cuando esos plásticos ya están clasificados, lavados y triturados, Fabricamos pellets gracias a unas máquinas llamadas extrusoras y una vez que tenemos obtenido la gronza de plástico, la usamos para soplar el plástico a altas temperaturas para volver a hacer y fabricar bolsas de film recicladas. En el caso nuestro de nuestra empresa, a tener todas las etapas del proceso de la basura desde la propia recogida hasta su tratamiento, lo que conseguimos o lo que queremos conseguir es, a partir de bolsas de basura procedentes del cubo de basura, recuperarlo, lavarlo y volver a producir bolsas de plástico, pero totalmente 100% recicladas. Mi segunda familia de proyecto se refiere al tratamiento del biogás. En nuestras instalaciones, clasificadas en dos, planta de biometrización. ¿Qué ha pasado? Ya estoy. Ah, lo siento. Como os iba a decir, la segunda familia de proyecto es el biogás. Biogás de vertedero o biogás de planta de biometrización. Este biogás lo vamos a enriquecer hasta tal punto que lo vamos a utilizar para vehículos. Entonces tenemos como socios la CIAT y la IBECO. Y con este biogás procedente de la basura lo enriquecemos para alcanzar calidad de biometano y utilizarlo en nuestros vehículos para recoger los residuos. Por lo tanto, cerramos el círculo totalmente. La última familia, y os lo quería contar porque me parece muy interesante y muy curioso, es conseguir tratar materia orgánica gracias a insectos. Es decir, a partir de la materia orgánica selectivamente recogida, vamos a trabajar con granjas de insectos para intentar hacer corresponder a, a cada tipo de materia orgánica un insecto específico con el fin de optimizar la asimilación de las proteínas. ¿Con qué objetivo final? Producir un abono agrícola o una comida para ganado e incluso al final del proyecto intentaremos crear comida para el humano. Me se me ha pasado el tiempo, os pues tengo que dejar. Estoy encantado. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So the aspiration to transform a linear circuit, a linear model into a circular one. It's, uh, it's tough and it requires creativity and innovation. And I think that the research community has a key role to play. 
we need the skills and the knowledge of researchers. But actually, and honestly, they quite often work in an isolated way. I know that because I have been a researcher myself. So let's facilitate the collaboration. Let's mix them with policymakers and, and businesses. And I am sure that Patrick Pang, Chief Technology Officer of the National Environment Agency of Singapore, has something to say about that. Thank you, Adriana. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's my pleasure to represent Singapore, uh, the NEA, uh, and maybe a part of Asia in this presentation. Um, just a word about uh, where I come from. I actually come from the government. I'm not from the academia or research uh, or the companies. Uh, and that's our mission, to keep Singapore clean and sustainable. Right? And among other things, we take care of uh, various aspects of our environment, from the clean land to the water, to the use of sustainable energy, uh, even the provision of uh, timely and accurate weather services. Uh, these are the things that we look at uh, from radiation, resource management and so on. But for today's presentation, I'll focus on waste and resource management. In fact, we tend to, we tend to see waste as a resource, right? Because of a uh, land scar Singapore, as I'll explain. Um, sorry, okay. This is a very uh, complex diagram, but essentially it sums up the waste system in Singapore. Every day, about 21,000 tons of waste is produced. About 60% of that is being recycled. We hope, to, we hope to raise this to 70% by the year 2030. Um, but the remaining 40% is actually sent to uh, the incineration plants, right? the ones at the bottom right corner. Let me just walk to this side. So 60% is recycled. The remaining 40% or so is being incinerated, which helps to keep the volume down of the waste by 90%. Right, so the ash is 10% is volume of the, of the waste. This is then sent to a landfill along with waste that cannot be burnt, right, which is too expensive or too dangerous to burn. And it goes to a landfill that looks like this. This is the landfill today. It's an island to the south of Singapore where the ash is actually buried to create a new island. Right? There's actually fish and coral reefs growing around it. Uh, should you come to Singapore, drop me a note. We're happy to host you at, to the excursion. But you're going to take a boat from the mainland of Singapore to this, right? But sad to say, Singapore is about 700 square kilometers in land and about another 700 square kilometers in the sea. There's only so much sea space we can take to make the, like, the next landfill, all right? In fact, at the rate we are going, we'll need another landfill come the year 2035, which is not very far away. So amongst other things, we have tried different ways to make use of the waste that gener is generated. Um, I was told that today it's called a solutions talk. So in fact, some of our things involve actual solutions, chemical solutions, right? Uh, for example, this slide shows an earlier pilot where we tried the cold digestion of food waste with water sludge from our water rec reclamation plants, uh, which was found to be more productive in terms of the methane production by 10%. Uh, this led to the formation of a pilot scale facility and in fact, for the upcoming uh, next incineration plant in Singapore, we will build it next to a water reclamation plant. Right? So the waste reclamation plant is to the top right and the water reclamation plant is to the bottom left, where there are synergies between water reclamation and waste treatment. Right? And this helps to save space for land scar Singapore. Uh, this is a complex diagram again, but this describes the R&D program that we currently oversee uh, to close the waste loop in Singapore. For example, theme one is about recycling and segregating the waste as close to the point of production as possible so that we can re recover as much value from it as possible. For example, one project that we have now is to recover lithium from spent lithium-ion batteries using uh, aqueous chemistry. That will be 10 times cheaper than if we to mine it from nature. Right? And as I explained earlier, we also look at uh, how to return landfill back into land so that we can actually make the best use of our resources. Right? That's theme two, landfill conservation. Theme three is about making use of existing landfills. Right? In the mainland of Singapore, there are some old landfills from the 1970s and 80s uh, when I was growing up. But as you can imagine, they are very precious land. So if there are successes we can have from themes one and two, we will translate some of these capabilities to mine the landfills, 
That means we will dig up the previously closed landfills to make use of the resources and hopefully free up the land for future allocation. And last but not least, theme four is where we look at using data to instrument the entire waste management system to have a better sense of what's going on and to inform our research for future generations. Um, these are some detailed slides. I'll be happy to give you a copy if you write to me uh, that goes into the various themes. But to sum it up, this is our, uh, our diagram, uh, our vision, where we hope to close as many loops as possible, right? Uh, as close to the point of production as possible, so as to keep as little of it wasted into, into, the, into the unknown, right? Thank you very much. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you very much, Patrick. Um, we have been talking about quite tangible aspects like products and raw materials and waste and we are going to finish with more abstract concepts maybe data and artificial intelligence so Isabel Tejero expert in energy efficiency at Enerbrain will tell us how to these or other technologies made 90 public buildings in Turin smarter, healthier and, and more efficient. Thank you. So, um, can you hear me well? Okay. Uh, so, thanks a lot for your interest in attending this session about waste management. Uh, but um, I'm so sorry, I'm not going to talk about waste management, but uh, how to manage no waste energy. Uh, so, uh, let's talk about that. But uh, first of all, let me introduce, briefly introduce in our brain. I don't have to think uh, to, uh, ah, it's over there. So, and our brain is providing a solution, IoT and um, a artificial intelligence solution that it's going to maximize uh, the energy efficiency for the HVAC system, I mean, for air conditioning system, and at the same time, we are going to guarantee the indoor comfort. And as a consequence, uh, we are going to have less CO2 emissions to the environment. How it, it, the, our system is working? Uh, we, have, we have different parts. Uh, let's talk about, briefly about them. Uh, first one, it's about knowing the place we are going to control. So for that, we have some sensors uh, we are producing and we are designing, of course, uh, that is go, uh, they are going to gather all the information regarding CO2 uh, temperature, humidity, and it's going to send all this information to the cloud uh, where our algorithm machine learning is going to, uh, to manage all this, uh, all this uh, data and it's going to define a protective model in order to maximize the energy efficiency of this air conditioning system. Uh, we are going to communicate via IoT uh, between the sensors and the cloud and we are going to communicate via uh, SEMA 3G, 4G between the uh, the cloud and the um, different uh, elements we are going to have in, a, in, the HVAC, in the HVAC system. We can control everything through our uh, dashboard. But let's talk about our project, uh, the one we have deployed in Torino. Maybe some of you, you know about uh, this, uh, this city, Torino. It's an industrial city close to the mountains uh, where you're going to have a lot of, uh, well, you're going to be freezing, frozen during the, uh, the winter. Uh, so the part of heating uh, we are going to have here, it's very, very important. And the quality of the air, it's not uh, as good as we would like to have. So um, here in our brain is going to help the city in order to improve the quality of the air. And uh, for that, uh, we have three different actors. First one, or players. First one, it's uh, the municipality of Torino. Second one, it's the utility, IREN, uh, which was awarded uh, to supply energy for the municipality during 10 years. In the contract, they signed, uh, it was a must to implement uh, energy efficiency measures in order to improve uh, the, uh, well, or to reduce the amount of energy they were, um, they were using in, the, in their different buildings. And uh, the third party is Enerbrain, uh, which uh, you already know uh, what kind of solution we are providing. Uh, the customer's, customer's uh, portfolio, it's about more than 200 buildings uh, that they have 
more than 20 different uh, functions. I mean, uh, some of them, they were schools, some others, they, they were talking about health, uh, offices, uh, museums, uh, facilities for sport. And uh, as we couldn't uh, work or analyze each one of them, uh, we decided uh, to analyze uh, what kind of solution, energy efficient uh, HVAC solution, uh, we had in each one of these different sectors. And uh, we decided uh, to focus our efforts just in schools, in offices and cultures and recreational. And uh, because the, uh, the solution was quite easy and it was very easy to install. Uh, so at the end of the day, we are installing our solution in nearly 90 buildings, uh, uh, half part of which uh, they are schools and uh, the rest are offices, cultural and recreational. Uh, after four weeks uh, where we install uh, all our system, uh, you know, all these uh, all uh, across uh, Torino, uh, we started uh, having some results. And uh, even if we committed with uh, the municipality and with Eden in uh, having a 15% of uh, savings, uh, after some months we achieved uh, more than 25%. We are always talking about uh, air conditioning system and vertical. So uh, an interesting point that I'm going to go into get into details because we have no time. We are. Uh, running out of time. Uh, it's about how to see what kind of uh, savings we are providing and for that we are using the, 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 the data we are gathering uh, with our system and defining a baseline and comparing it uh, with the real results we have after uh, running our, our system. And uh, well, in brief, uh, we are providing good results that we are going to continue checking in the, the months to come. And uh, we are considering new uh, rollout uh, plans uh, for this city in, uh, in, the, the, in the years to come as well. So thanks a lot. So we have like eight minutes, let's say 10 minutes left. We had a quite wild session, a quite mix uh, between circular economy projects, territorial projects, waste management and the last one in energy efficiency. Is there any questions? I have questions, of course, but it's the time to, yes, to satisfy your curiosity. Yes, we have a question there. So. <laughs> Thanks, Teresa. Thank you very much for very nice presentations. Uh, I have a question for you, Mr. Patrick Pang. Are you looking into other solution than incineration for the energy recovery, like biogas production, in order to increase the efficiency of the system? Thanks for the question. Uh, I think you're asking whether we are looking at other technologies and incineration. Yes, uh, incineration was a choice made by my country back in the 70s. In fact, right was when I was about when I was born um, for space considerations. Right, Singapore is space constrained, so we have uh, we have went with, we've gone with that decision. Um, my job as CTO is to create new options through uh, research and development, and one area of research we are going into is slagging gasification, where we are looking at super high temperatures to gasify the waste. And there's a slag that results, that is a glass-like material, which can be used almost like sand. Uh, in fact, there will be some announcements by my minister later this month. So stay tuned for some announcements on Singapore, where we will pioneer the use of some of these uh, slag into various uh, applications in Singapore. Yeah, so we are looking at uh, other solutions such as incineration. Earlier, I also spoke about using chemistry, aqueous chemistry, to extract specific elements from waste streams like electronic waste. So that's another example. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. More questions? Come on. No questions? Teresa? <laughs> yes, we have one question there. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, where is it here? Can, I, can you hear me? Uh, my question is actually for you, Sabine. Uh, so I come from Canada where it's really cold. Turino isn't cold, but it's not as cold as Canada. So my question is actually around 
Uh, you're looking at the technology and actually measuring based on the feeling and, and the people and the actual. So you're utilizing sensors, I assume, to measure the temperature inside. Is that right? Are you using sensors? And are you guys collaborating with actual structures, like the physical structures? Do you collaborate with companies that offer physical structure in order to prevent heat from leaving in the winter, for example? Or is it all data driven? In fact, we are using data in, for this specific solution I, uh, I was uh, sharing with you. Uh, for this specific solution, we are using data, existing data that we are gathering through our sensor or existing sensors as well, in order to better manage the existing system. So uh, in case we are going to find or we are to install one system like, like a rooftop or uh, like boiler, chiller, we are going to be sure that this uh, specific equipment machine is going to be the best way possible working. I mean, uh, we are not going to make some kind of assessment. We can do it as well. This is another job or another service we are providing. But related to this uh, project, the system is going to run alone. It's going to learn about patterns and uh, considering occupancy, the weather, the forecast, and uh, the inertia of the buildings. And it's going to manage the best way possible this uh, system. Thank you. What questions? No questions. I, um, I would like to share a discussion that I had with Cynthia prior to the event because it was very, very interesting. Uh, we, what's the, we were talking about the circular economy and how often we just talk about the industry. And of course, they play a key role within the circular model. Uh, but is that it? I mean, they, they often said this, this, uh, this phrase, uh, you have to look where the money is. Uh, what happens if we look where the money isn't? And Cynthia, can you, can you just uh, say a few words about that? Because I, I sure. found it really interesting. Is my microphone on? Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, this was a great discussion. It's one that I've had quite a few times, but rarely, or actually never on stage. Wherever you go, people say, well, the focus on the circular economy, we have to go where the money is. It's the same as you've heard with any other buzzword that's circling around, no pun intended. But I'm quite curious to know, what if we look where the money isn't? I think that's what we're going to start seeing social equity come into play. We're going to start seeing solutions that affect all the different levels and see a broader picture of the circular economy, not simply looking at that meso level of industry and ecosystems and clusters. And I think that if we can look at that internationally and understand what's working, what are the barriers, what's needed, we can start developing policy and funding mechanisms to make that succeed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Cynthia. Talking also about all the stakeholders, uh, apart from the industry, um, public authorities, also yeah, key actors in this new paradigm. I have a question for Ignacy. Um, what is or should be actually the role of the public authority within the circular economy? Preguntas en inglés y contento Castilla. El rol de la administración tiene que ser el de impulsar, el de canalizar pues, todas estas energías que vemos que hay en muchas empresas, que vemos que, que hay también en la sociedad civil para ser catalizadores pues, de este impulso que aparece como uno de los compromisos de la Agenda 2030 y de los ODS. ¿no? Yo creo que tenemos que facilitar un contexto donde poder desarrollar proyectos de economía circular y yo creo que esto siempre se va a hacer con alianzas y tenemos que buscar los partners para ser capaces de, de fraguar estas alianzas de futuro que van a transformar no solo nuestras ciudades y nuestros pueblos, sino también nuestra manera de consumir, nuestra manera de vivir. Y yo creo que esto es fundamental. ¿no? Digo, por lo tanto, tenemos un rol de ser muy ejemplarizantes, pero también de ser capaces de poder catalizar e impulsar todas las iniciativas que vemos en estos momentos. Estupendo. Supongo que también en, estas, en las entidades públicas 
uh, viene muy bien tener estas figuras de facilitadores ¿no? de economía circular, que es un nuevo rol, es una, es un, es un nuevo, una nueva posición, un nuevo trabajo dentro de, de los ayuntamientos. ¿no? Hay que empezar a pensar un poquito transversal y, y no solo trabajar en el departamento de economía o en el de medio ambiente o en el de promoción económica, sino decir, hey, vamos a mirar toda el, el, la entidad pública como, como un todo y, y vamos a actuar conjuntamente. ¿no? Y, y vamos a empezar a formar a esos técnicos de ayuntamiento a facilitar la economía circular. Um, estupendo, Ignacio, gracias. More questions from the audience. We, we are run. Yes, we, we have no time, but if, uh, if, if there is something missing. Sorry? Oh, yes. Uh, I suppose that uh, you have a program? Yes, so... <laughs> yes, so I have to stop. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining the session. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did.